Arms. <laughs> yeah. Great, how about yourself? Good deal. Pretty good. Pretty awesome. Good. Awesome. Seeing you up there with something. You look so natural up there. I mean, you've obviously been doing it a while. You look several times. <laughs> you look like, you know, sometimes when we see people, they look like they're trying real hard, but you just look like. Okay. He's been here. That's He's been here twice. Yeah. Uh, two or three times. She's got the command. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really support this. I think this is great. Yeah. And I, I come down here, I don't use the chuck turkey. And yeah, yeah. Uh, through, through him, I became acquainted with the rest of it. Some friends of mine from France who were on tour came here to. to uh, that was a cool night. They made an album of uh, a number of people that they liked in the United States, and they, they traveled around and made cuts with, with those people. And I was one of those people. And I uh, brought them down here, and we, uh, we played a little set. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Every, everybody, when you have somebody coming out of the country, they're like a big deal. They make a comedic International. 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 That's great. <laughs> yeah. So you're, um... I might get over there, too, next summer. Looks like. Oh, really? Oh, that'd be brilliant. France and Germany. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, You've been there before, though. Oh, you traveled. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Such an awesome... Ah, so... Yeah. Okay. So you're a master artist in Florida. Is that like... How does that work? Well, the, the Florida State Department uh, had a program called the Bureau of Florida Folk Life. Which I think uh, Rick Scott and his friends have uh, destroyed. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> one of our great people. But uh, at that time, they were giving out uh, awards to people that they felt were, were masterful Florida artists. I was honored to be one of those people. So, uh, I, did, uh, I did. Uh, they presented us in a special show at the Florida Folk Festival where we did our thing and so forth. So, that sounds super cool. Yeah, I was reading over, uh, he sent us like a little press release, or press release, so I think you should have done it. Poop sheet. Poop sheet. He calls it poop sheet. <laughs> and uh, needless to say, very impressive year. Also, uh, traditional country music hall of fame. Right. I, I was inducted into the National Traditional Country Music Hall of Fame. Uh, it seems like that was about 10 or 12 years ago. Uh, that's, that's a... That is an organization that is dedicated to the preservation of real country music as opposed to this folk meal that they're putting out. It's like a pop almost. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's what happens when meat counters get a hold of the owners. And, and uh, the NCT, the National Traditional Council, established the program and uh, inducted each year, folks are inducted into the Hall of Fame. Um, and there was a pretty distinguished company, and we're very honored to, to be there. That's amazing. So, so what you know? What I always think, like, because we see so many new people in, in all different levels. But what would you say? I mean, um, and I've heard some people say, well, like, well, the key to success, like, if someone's going to be in a position, and you're going to have a lifetime of music. What's like the number one? Because sometimes I don't think it's even down. It doesn't. Well, sound. I think this. You've got to have some talent, but but I think you, know, you have to be persistent. You have to be workmanlike. You got to show up. <laughs> you know, yeah. all of that has to happen. Now I'm not talking about stars. Once once they become eminent stars and so forth, then they can start, you know, being unreliable. So yeah, <laughs> that's somebody else's job. But so, I yeah. spent my whole working life as a working musician, and that means. You got to get up and show up and be there with your instrument and know how to do the job and do the job. You don't go into a recording session. You know, people are, are a lot of money involved in recording sessions and you can't go in and say, well, now, let's see, how would I do this? You know, you yeah, have to you know what you're have doing. It. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and if you know what you're doing and you uh, do well at it, then you get a rep and people will call you and not some. Other yeah, that, that, that seems what, what I was getting at, because a lot of times you see somebody who's very good, but they're not reliable. They don't yeah. seem, they're just like a natural talent that is taking for them. One big advantage I always had is that I, I, I can fluently read and write music. And, and a great many musicians, unfortunately, can't do it. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I could, one thing I used to love about being in Europe was nobody who, who calls himself a, a professional musician in Europe is unable to read and write music. And so I could go over and I could, I could have some people that maybe hadn't recorded with me before or something. In fact, I did this once. And I could write it down and they could get up and read it and play it. And I had a one uh, CD that I made. As a matter of fact, I had a banjo player who had never heard of some of the music in his life, but I was able to write it down for the man. And yeah. he played it on the his CD. And if you listen to the CD, you think he's been playing that stuff all his life because he was good and he could do it. Yeah, he knew the language. That's right. right. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That in it crosses all the borders too. It's the sweet thing for that. was a great experience making that album. I did some Western swing. Of course, these were European musicians. They never heard of Western swing in their life. Yeah. And so uh, they, kept, and it was funny. We made a lot of cuts, and uh, some of the cuts were no perfect, but they didn't have that feel because they were European people. Yeah, yeah, they, they didn't have the jive the soul for it. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Not that they didn't do well, if you guys are listening. You can just... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we are in an auction. We know some people in France we can send this out to. So, yeah. put a on. <laughs> so yeah. you can't play music. They will be watching. It's on uh, YouTube, so it's international. Yeah, yeah that's what I know. Okay, yeah. Do we have the uh, Zone Zone 2 rights released on that yet to get it out to Europe? Is that what copyright? I think it goes this? everywhere on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, Do we yeah, put it under Creative Commons? YouTube's or? available anyway. Huh. I routinely have YouTube exchanges with people in New Zealand and Australia and so forth. International. That's really uh, cool. They also do um, a lot of work. Do you still work with the Sunshine State Acoustic Music Camp? We, we did a 25 year run of that, mm -hmm. and two years ago was the 25th anniversary. And at that same time, the uh, facility we had used all those years became unavailable in the future and we just thought it over and we decided you know 25 years was a great run and uh, we decided to go on this were there any um so did you teach so you taught a bunch of people um, oh many 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 yeah many 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 you know we started a lot of people on music several bands came out of the people that met each other there uh, one marriage. Huh. People met each other at the camp. Are they still together? And yes, they are. That's good to hear. Like they are. It's like the end yeah. of the end. It, it was a lot of fun. It really was a lot of fun. We just reached a point where we thought, okay, we've done it now. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm currently talking with a guy in Malacca who might be starting up another music camp, and if he does, I'm going to be very supportive of that. How old are the kids? Are, are, they, are they not kids? The youngest student we ever had was four, and the oldest was just under a month. Oh, wow, so it's <laughs> quite a range. <laughs> we had a lady way up in her 90s who not only came to the camp, but came back the next year with some more. Um, but that's cool, so it's not just for yeah. kids. That sounds amazing. Do you have anything that uh, you have on the horizon other than the Camp Polenta? Well, I'm doing a, what I'm doing now. I'm sort of Tire, in a sense. Mm -hmm. So I play when I, when I want to play, where I want to play, and I choose them, and some, some of them are pay jobs, and some of them are places like Nomadic, and, and some of them are, uh, uh, I do a lot of fundraisers. I have a whole series called the Helping Hand Concert, mm -hmm. and what we do is, is that we find people who are in need, and we do a Helping Hand Concert, everybody in it. It's a volunteer. There's no all the money that we raise from those concerts goes directly, without any deduction, to the person benefit. There's no deduction for this. I don't take a little fee. The guy that has the menu. Okay, no, that's wonderful. Every last cent involves goes to the person benefit. We just did one in uh, Sarasota for a gentleman named Carl Wade. I'm very sorry to say he passed away this but he was in terrible need and uh, we raised some thousands of dollars for him. That's awesome. Yeah, we had people, we had musicians from all over the state of Florida that came to play that concert. And every, every last cent of that money went to help Carl with his medical expenses. 
That sounds amazing. It sounds As a better like, effect, if I don't miss my guest, didn't I have some preliminary conversations with you about doing one here? Yeah, you did. Um, and that's what Dramatic is. It's an yeah. acre space, we, so we would be totally open. We haven't got to that yet, but I remember it read, when I played here one night, yeah, I broke the subject to you. Yeah. yeah, that's basically, I mean, this show is to, is to just support uh, local artists and it's artists, anybody in the community is doing something. And so, Comatic itself, uh, although they have fun with some of the things like this show, is, is basically supposed to be a community maker space. So, if you have an idea or you yep. want to do an event, they can come in here. Yeah, so absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, and I want to pursue that. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Definitely. Make sure well, we got Chuck. Chuck has been our right hand man as far as yeah. connections. And Chuck's very, very, he's he's right. Right. We gotta have him on the show too. Every time we have someone come here, I'm like, how do we get this guy? If I'm off base, make sure enough one friend, Chuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you sure knows everyone. Yeah. It sounds like you do exactly what you want to do, at this, especially at this point. At this life. stage in my life, I'm calling the shots. There you go. I, I love to garden. Yeah, that's that's a big passion. And all my life, I've been on the road. I've been traveling. I haven't been able to do that. As a matter of fact, I, I have had a couple of times where I have lived somewhere long enough that it might have been possible, and those were places, the mountains of New Mexico, for example, where it just wasn't feasible. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. a beautiful place, but it's mostly rocks and sand. Yeah. <laughs> but when I got, I got off the road four years ago, and I decided, you know, I'm going to have a real garden and, and really do it my way, and good luck to up, my girlfriend is into that too. So something we can do together. And, uh, so we grow vegetables. And I grow all kinds of spoils. 